both and throughout the entire journey of the Bible. It's mentioned time and time again. I believe, as Janice mentioned last week, it's mentioned over 500 times throughout the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament included. And the nice thing about those two books is that the Old Testament and the New Testament have very different ideas of what the light means and what it's providing for you as a follower of God. So when we get right started with the Old Testament, <laughs> we don't have to look much further than Genesis. It's on the very first page. We get our very first mention, Genesis 1, verses 3 through 4. I'm sure a lot of you know this one. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And it soon made clear what that represents to the people at the time. Light was a symbol of God's grace. It was his guidance to all humans throughout the area. And it often manifested itself very physically. In Exodus, we have the story of Moses saving his people from the lands of Egypt. And at one point, Egypt is plunged into deep darkness. However, the Israelites, God's chosen people, remain lit throughout all of it. In Moses and his people, they prepare to leave Egypt, and they're going to go through the land of the Philistines, who did not favor them. It was a conflict-ridden area, and they were likely to face some war in the time. Instead, we're told in Exodus 13, God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, although that was near. For God thought, if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. The Lord went in front of them, in a pillar of cloud by day, to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night, to give them light, so they make travel by day and by night. And here we have God very literally guiding his people by the light on their chosen path. The light is God's will, directing people where they are meant to be. However, the chosen path was not the obvious one. In order to be delivered from their subjugation, Moses and his people had to trust God and to be and abandon their own ideas to follow in his guidance. And in doing so, they were saved. Many of the Old Testament writers mention this moment. It clearly left a very profound impact on Christians at the time. There's a sense of obedience and servility throughout the writings. It's been seen that following God's light is the path to salvation, but doing so means strict adherence to the law as set forth by Moses, and it was proven by his saving. However, many are confused at the time. They follow the law, but do not feel the guidance of grace. They feel prosecuted, they feel alone, and they're left clawing in the darkness, nowhere near the light. Nowhere is this better seen than Job. A lot of us know Job. He was a very pious, devout man, a righteous follower of God. And for all of those efforts, he was met with endless trials, unspeakable burdens, and he begins to lose faith, going so far as to curse the day he was born, saying, let the day perish on which I was born. Let that day be darkness. May God above not seek it or light shine on it. Let gloom and deep darkness claim it. Job has rejected rejected God's light entirely and the path set out for him. He is left pining over why such awful things must befall him before God comes down and rebukes Job's comments. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and where is the place of darkness that you may take it to its territory and that you may discern the path to its home, says God. Job comes to understand that for all his piety and all of his righteousness, he cannot delineate between the godly light and desperate dark. The path before him has been obfuscated as he severed his tie to God. He is humbled and repents for his bitterness towards the Lord. In doing so, he has re-entered God's path of life and is rewarded many times <laughs> over in his corporeal life. The message is one of faith and fealty, trusting in God's wisdom over one's own, rejecting your own sense of what should be so you may better follow what is and ultimately reaping earthly rewards as a result. The path through God's light at this time has been simplified. As the wise king Ecclesiastes says, fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. That alone is the path of light. In my mind, that is the prevailing message of the Old Testament, something that's reiterated time and time again as people search. Until one day, Jesus of Nazareth is born, bringing with him the new message that defines our faith and why we're all here. In John 1, he gets right to the point. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light was now of all people, shining brightly within them, such that no darkness could ever overtake God's grace. All humans are of the flock, meant to follow our gentle shepherd and his teachings. Our sins have been forgiven, and our many transgressions made known. Of us, only two things are asked. Love God, and love thy neighbor. No longer is the path of light, 
something you will be rewarded earthly treasures for following, like Job, nor is it something you will face earthly punishments for faltering from. The light comes from within and from your very blessing as a child of God. The path and actions you take is yours to decide. The way forward will not be obvious. No longer will a flaming pillar lead your way, guiding you safely away from the Philistines. God's guidance has been embodied in your very spirit and the light you project at all times. Do good things and love others, not for the rewards, but because it is what is inside you. Because through Jesus Christ, God has blessed you with his life and left it to you to use lies with. Take pride as a child of God. Hold that light, that holy light within you and let it guide you towards what is right. As Matthew says in chapter 5, verse 16, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.